Hello. Are you ready to dive into the most powerful update to plasticity this far? This update has exceeded my expectations. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter. I honestly can't believe it's just been six months since Plasticity 1, and here we are on 1.3. Now that might not sound like much, it might sound like, you know, only 1, 2, 3, but this one's a big one, I promise, and you'll see why in this video. And Plasticity's truly changed my hard surface workflow, and in my opinion, it's one of the best value for money 3D softwares on the market right now. Um, I've been waiting for this release because of the Blender Bridge and the Blender Live Link, which we'll cover in this video. And by the way, that's amazing. But when it came out, some of the other stuff in this release sort of blew my socks off in terms of, uh, I just wasn't expecting it. And I'll cover some of that in this video. So let's go into some of these game changing features. So the first one, edges. Okay, so edges were always a little bit buggy. Okay, so we got this shape here. Okay, so one of the things that you couldn't do before and you'd often press G, I want to move that edge like you do in Blender and it just wouldn't work. Now it works, but you do need to notice that let's just say we've got this up here. We'll go um, G like that. Um, that it will sort of muck up the whole line. So you, it's not quite the same as in Blender where if you just moved that one in Blender, or in another mire or something, it would just um, move one aspect. Um, and in this case, it does edit the sort of whole um, face. However, um, you can now, you can control R just like uh, Blender to add an edge loop and you can press tab to rotate it. We'll just put that in the center like that and we'll bring that down. Or we could even Press spacebar to make that a um, temporary construction plane. And we'll just keep that one. Custom plane. Run our custom plane. And then we can press 2 and we can bring this down on its Z axis. So we're getting that. Get rid of our custom plane. And we can just fill it that out. And we can get this shape quite nicely now so obviously that was possible before but this is just a, a new way of doing that kind of thing um, and then the next feature I want to highlight um, which is just another sort of quality of life thing that wasn't possible before uh, let's take this um, cylinder we'll just press B to make it a new body we'll go back to our custom plane and we'll drag that down on the X uh, sorry the Z <laughs> And then um, we'll Boolean this one out. So you're just clicking that, pressing Q, like that. Okay, so previously, when you wanted to fill up this uh, edge, this might not be the best example, because it does look relatively even, but this is what's called a conic fillet. Okay, and we've got this new one, which is called caudal. So if I click that, you'll notice that it becomes perfectly even. Okay, which is great for <laughs> having even stuff, especially like, um, you know, uh, you know, molded stuff uh, from 3D prints and stuff would probably be quite even. Um, and it just adds something extra that you can do. So here we've got this kind of strange, um, I don't know what this is, something you can throw a basketball into from a distance or something. Okay. So uh, the next thing I wanted to highlight is let's just say we just get a couple of objects out here. Um, let's just put a couple of circles. Let's just make this into a something. Let's say we've got another circle in there, like another level of details. Okay, so Let's say we've got our multiple levels of isolation. So we've got our primary, our secondary, and our tertiary shapes, uh, you know, in design philosophy. Um, so we want to isolate these. So we can select all these three and we can click the period button on your numpad. 
and it isolates well if we select this one and isolate it it'll isolate those two out if we select these three it'll isolate that one out and then if we select these two it'll isolate if we select this one it'll isolate the other two out so now we've got the multiple levels of isolation so and you can go back see so that's a really good way just to isolate overall your um different objects um and if you especially if you've got a highly complicated uh you know like a big robot with heaps of different screws on it and stuff you can you can really work easily especially if you're working with groups um also we've got um changes in the naming functionality which is really great so let's say um obviously you can rename one object and call it primary okay and then we can choose these two okay and we can actually just hold down shift and double hold up hold down shift and double click that and we can call that secondary and then we can choose these two and hold down shift and it's a little bit buggy but um and then we can go tertiary okay obviously you'd probably call them different things but that's a really good way to um work now because you can mass rename things especially if like let's say you've like copied and pasted this like 400 times um obviously before it was just calling like solid 5402 or something uh you can actually mass rename things a, a lot easier now um the next thing is radial menus so um they have released the ability to make custom radial menus now you if you want to make your own there is a little bit of coding involved and i'm going to do a separate tutorial on that in the coming week or so so keep your eyes out for that um like subscribe press the bell notification and all that or don't if you don't want to see it but um this one is just a, a radial menu that they send as an example on the website of which you can change the uh, point edge face and object mode that's great i also made my own custom one okay to do a curve array a radial array a rectangular array and patch a hole so um obviously that works let's just test if my code works so we'll uh, go like that and patch a hole works perfectly okay so i will do a separate um, tutorial on that explaining how to do it and 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 deep dive that um now the next feature is probably the one that i found the most exciting and it's not the blender bridge although the blender bridge is amazing we'll get to that next the next one is you can have a new window okay that doesn't sound like much but it wasn't possible before and you can also kit bash between uh different um you can also kit bash between um your two windows so i'll just set up another window here and we'll um we'll dive into that a little bit so here we are with uh two uh windows open um, as you can see, you can go between the two and you can um, do whatever you like in each window. Now, the cool part comes, okay, so uh, if you don't know, you can just press Control B in the viewport and Control B in the other viewport. And now we've got two, um, two viewports. I always end up making screws. Um, like per project and it's really annoying and tedious so like every time i need a screw so as soon as i found out about this uh feature i went and kept bashed a bunch of screws i made 44 exterior screws and 44 ones that you can inset so um i did you know like the main kinds you, you have uh flathead phillips phillips security i don't know what that's called it's another kind of phillips uh, these allen key ones security allen key triangular rounded triangular and a few more uh less common ones like these star shaped ones and then i did a handful in the domed uh style as well as well as a couple of just uh plain nothing ones okay so um i also went and made the whole um the whole library in as inset curve so normally i think you press Control c 
when you're within um one uh what shall we use for this one um let's use this hex inset um one here or maybe actually one of the domed ones because it's a chest like a pirate chest so um we'll use this like domed um domed hex here okay so you press Control shift c choose the center and come over to your other one and we'll go Control shift v and it comes in quite big but I haven't really bothered with scale too much, but if you just bring it roughly where you want the center, then you can use this blue handle to bring it down to whatever size you want. You can press W to make it a, um, a, a Boolean. And then you can use this blue circle to rotate it and this yellow handle if you can grab it to bring it in or out see how far you want your inset so i think i'll bring it something like that okay and then once you've figured out that where you like it i probably want that a little bit smaller to be honest can be a little bit fiddly okay and there we've got that kind of bolt bring another one down there rotate it so that you're not getting a uh, perfect um uh rotation it, it becomes very obvious to the human eye. The human eye notices repetition. So we want this to be a little bit uh, manual. Okay, and then we've got bolts in there. So I'll just quickly put a couple over there. And rotate one of those. And rotate this one. Okay, and now what we can do, just press escape. And then you can, this is all part of the same mesh. So you can just mirror it across. And then you've got your bolts on all, all sides there. Now, the next thing, okay, so that's really cool. Oh, and by the way, I have actually set up a Patreon. Um, and I'm going to include this as my first Patreon uh, asset. So the Patreon will be for things that I make that I think that you guys might find useful. I'm going to add this as my first um, edition there. It's actually, it's already up there. So you can click the link in the description and go and join. Um, I think it's, I think I said six or 650 a month. Um, and I'm also going to start uploading some of my older assets, materials, and every time I add to something like this, I'll re-upload and let you guys know. And I also just included a, a slightly cheaper tier if you're not bothered about this stuff, but you just want to help me out or say thanks for, you know, um, the stuff that I do. Alrighty, so let's get on to the main event. And this is the thing that I've been waiting for. This is the blender bridge. So once you've set it up and I'm going to do a separate tutorial on that. So keep your eye out for that. But once you've set it up, um, all you do need to do is press connect. Okay. You can tick this box only visible because if you don't, it'll bring in everything that's also um, uh, been hidden um, and we can click refresh. Okay and there we have it our object okay so uh, we'll do the same in here and you've got those bolts that we made and what you can also do is you can live link so if i click live link okay and then i start to say oh yeah around those bolts i didn't really i forgot to add fillets so we just quickly add a few fillets fillet those out maybe make them kind of uh, rounded ones because it's a sort of uh, stylized object right click updated in blender and it's so fast and then we can go to the other side and do the same do that fillet that back and then we can use this fillet usually this works to define that that one's going to be the same size right click in plasticity updated in blender so fast and um, then we can just, you know, take this object, go around to the other side. Okay. And so this would be really great for like, once you've got your primary details, visualizing, um, the, uh, the baked details that you wanted to do. So like if I was making a low poly game asset, 
I probably would have already got my base mesh out and now I'm adding screws and things that'll just go into the normal maps and not actually be um, details um, and, and, and do it that way. And then I can visualize as I go and I can change my mat caps, which you can't currently do in Plasticity. But I did notice that the creator of Plasticity recently put it on the to-do list in the feature requests. So I don't think that'll be too far off. So we've got this mat cap on right now. We can change to something a little bit more moody to sort of visualize how that might look in a dungeon or something like that or um, change it to something uh, where we can see our highlights better and and just see that the highlights we know that those uh, curves on the edge of those uh, nuts are going to um, show highlights when you're in game okay so this is currently on the live link so we can disable the live link now okay and then um, we'll just maximize Blender actually. And now we've got this, we'll just go back to a more um, readable uh, mat cap. Actually, I quite like uh, this one for that. Shows the highlights, but it's not too shiny. Um, now, once we've done that, um, if we open this up, you can see that it's come through automatically as triangles. So if we click Ngon and just click refacet, we've now got our Ngon base meshes. We can refacet this one as well. Okay, sometimes you lose a little bit of detail, but if you go into advanced, you can obviously, uh, you know, edit these things here um, to get a little bit more detail back. Um, it is giving us some surface imperfections and things like that from time to time. Um, I believe this might be a bug to do with Blender. I'm on Blender 3.6, um, but I, I think that um, uh, it's, if you use Blender 3.5, this is not a problem. So um, let's see if this works with triangles. It's working with triangles, but the Engon base mesh, it's um, not that, amazing right now in that regard but this one's fine with Engons so let's just uh, ignore that one for a moment and if you remember my Engon Pro plugin um, that's when we can just sort of make a duplicate of this okay well, we'll, we'll get we'll actually just hide this for now and we'll make a duplicate of this okay solid 2.001 okay and we can just rename that to chest base. Okay, rename it. And then we can just create the low poly. Okay, and I think we need to get rid of that. So we got our low poly there. We got a little bit of artifact thing here. Doesn't really matter. We can just bring this up a little bit. And that should be fine because our high poly would be baking our normals into that. And look at our wireframe. We've now got a, a low poly uh, version of that. Okay, with the data transfer. And if you take the data transfer off, you can see the, you can start to see all of the uh, issues with it. So amazing stuff. Okay, and that's about it. So um, thanks a lot for watching. Um, like I said, I've got some upcoming videos. Um, I'm going to do one on how to make radio radial menus, uh, one on kit bashing uh, more comprehensively, and another one on the Blender Bridge. So like, subscribe, and bell notification for those. And also you can check out Engon and my Patreon in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.